Hey, what is up everyone? It's David here. Battery Day was possibly one of the most exciting events this year, except for my own birthday, this channel getting monetized, and also my Asian parents calling me to ask how many subscribers I have on YouTube. So in this video, I'm gonna share a few of my Battery Day highlights. Then based on my learnings, I'll contextualize what was said to how it will impact both Novonix and Tauga. Jordan from The Limiting Factor will dive deeper into the technical details, so stay tuned for that as well. Full disclosure, I have a position in Tesla, Novonix, and Tauga. And no, I didn't panic sell any of my shares. As usual, if you learn something new, consider gently smashing that like button right there. And because I'm just some random shaved head Asian dude on the internet, please don't use my videos as financial advice. So without further ado, let's go. During the Tesla battery day, the highlights are like a seafood buffet. You almost can't go wrong picking any of them. But here are a few things that really blew my mind. Now, the first thing that blew my mind is the tabless cell design. Now, currently most battery cells have a tab connected to the jelly roll. And within the jelly roll, there are multiple layers inside containing the cathode and anode material separated by an outer and inner separator. The two main challenges with the tab design is heat and also a lack of continuous motion in cell production. Because as the cells go through the production machine, they will have to stop at the tab and then start again. With a tabless design, cell production can operate at a continuous motion, increasing the output being produced and also simplifying the manufacturing process with one less step. On top of that, without the tab, the electrons are not bottlenecked to move through a single tab. Since the entire area that you see right here becomes conductive, and that reduces the amount of heat generated as well. With this form factor change, the Tesla cells are enabling a 5x in energy, 16% longer range, and six times power. And guess what? They are already manufacturing it. The next thing that really blew my mind is in cell production. Now, as part of the cell production process, you have to coat sheets within the battery cell with either cathode or anode material. Now, this process requires a huge amount of footprint and equipment. Now, just to walk you through the process, the first step is to mix the active ingredients together, either with water or a solvent. And then that mixture will be pushed into a coat and dry oven, where the mixture will be essentially coated onto a foil and then pushed through the oven to be dried. And then once that's done, you compress it to a density that you want, and then it's ready to be rolled. Now, instead of doing all of that, this is where Maxwell's dry battery electro technology comes into play. Cutting the massive steps in between out and then going straight from powder to film, dry coating the materials onto the sheets. 10x footprint reduction and 10x energy reduction. But at the same time, Drew and Elon have also said that they are still ironing out the details for how to scale the technology. So it's not quite perfect yet. The next battery day highlight is the anode material highlight. Now silicon was the front and center of that section. Since silicon is the most abundant element in Earth's crust after oxygen, it can store more lithium than graphite. Now the challenge with using silicon, an anode, is that it expands four times when fully charged with lithium. And as you charge and discharge those battery cells, the volume expansion will crack the silicon particles ultimately losing the cycle life of the cells. Now, Elon and Drew didn't explicitly say the percentage of the silicon loading, but it seems that they are referring to a 100% silicon anode and suggest that it will be $1.20 per kilowatt hour at that loading. As soon as that was mentioned, people freaked out saying that silicon will completely replace graphite. It's important to acknowledge that we don't have a timeline of when Tesla will completely move to 100% silicon anode. But I did get a chance to speak to a PhD battery researcher in Australia about this. He helped me understand that it's incredibly difficult to control the volume expansion of a 100% silicon anode. But he did mention that it is possible to see a battery cell with 5-15% to silicon mixed into the anode in the very, very near future. Now this sentiment is actually reinforced by both Professor Shirley Meng and Mark Thompson's interview with Jordan from The Limiting Factor. I have left links to both of those videos in the description box below and I highly recommend you to check it out if you are interested in battery technologies. By the way, 
Professor Shirley Meng specializes in nanomaterials engineering in UCSD, and UCSD is part of the Battery 500 Consortium. And at the same time, Mark Thompson is the CEO of Talga Resources. I will leave their technical deep dive to Jordan, but I am fairly confident that graphite anode is not going anywhere in the next five to 10 years. If we talk about anode, we have to talk about cathode. And personally, during battery day, cathode materials was just icing on the cake. The true highlight for me is the innovation in the cathode production process. Now, this is the traditional cathode process. And as you can see, it involves a lot of different steps with a lot of different chemicals. And on top of that, it consumes a crap ton of water. What Tesla proposes is a much simpler process removing the need to use chemicals and a crap ton of water. And when this was announced, the internet freaked out even more, trying to draw parallels between Tesla process and Novonix DPMG technology. But if you pay close attention, Tesla's cathode production process uses water, whereas Novonix DPMG technology is a completely dry process. And honestly, Dr. Chris Burns' battery day announcement reinforced the fact that Tesla is not using Novonix DPMG technology. If Tesla did sign a deal to license out the DPMG technology, I'm pretty sure they'll just straight up say it like some of the other companies did. The new Tesla cathode production process will save them 66% in CapEx investment and a 76% in process cost and zero waste water. And the final highlight for me is the single piece casting and redesigning the battery pack to be part of the car. This single piece of casting will juice 79 parts per car in the manufacturing process. And the structural batteries with the single piece casting will juice mass by 10% and it has 370 fewer parts. We need to acknowledge how difficult just one area of innovation is. But five entire areas of innovation. At this point, who can realistically catch up to Tesla's engineering prowess? All right, let's talk about what all this means for both Novonix and Talga. As soon as battery day ended, since Novonix wasn't really mentioned during the day, the share price went to the moon and then ended back down to earth. In a way that really shows a big chunk of uncle auntie investors that was really banking on a relationship between Tesla and Novonix. And it was certainly compounded by the fact that Tesla mentioned a silicon-based anode where a big chunk of Novonix's current business is in the graphite anode. But here's my take on the situation. Yes, the Tesla cathode production process is not very likely going to be Novonix's DPMG technology. Silicon-based anode was mentioned during battery day. But from my conversation with a few independent researchers and also a PhD student in battery technology, it seems like a 100% silicon anode is still quite far away. The electrification tailwind is happening right now and we need a lot of graphite anode to make that happen. The cost, safety and the track record is already proven with graphite anodes. I mean seriously, our world is on fire right now. Do you think that we'll wait till we can prove that 100% silicon anode works and then transition into sustainable energy. Don't get me wrong, I believe that there is a transition towards increasing silicon mixed inside the anode for performance reasons. And we might just see battery cells with 10 to 15% silicon mixed inside the anode and made at scale in the next few years. But by then, we might be talking about solid state batteries and no longer just silicon based anode batteries. Novonix, in my opinion, is still in position to capture the electrification tailwind. That's why I didn't panic sell my shares. While we're on the topic of Novonix, it's worthwhile mentioning that on the same day, they did do a leadership update. Now, Dr. Chris Burns have became the group CEO, which I'm really glad to see because ultimately, you do want to make it clear in terms of who is captain of the ship. Nick Laveras became the group CFO and Philip St. Baker have retired and essentially swapped with his dad, Trevor St. Baker, as a non-executive director. What stood out to me is Admiral Rob Nader taking an executive director position to support the pure graphite operations team in Tennessee. Now, this move is mainly there to emphasize the importance of the North American market. And I wonder what Admiral Nader would do to secure their place as a top tier battery material supplier in North America. Let me know what you think of that in the comment section below. With Talga, I am not worried at all. 
Novonics currently don't have a working silicon graphite anode product. Talga does with Talnode SI. As a matter of fact, Talnode SI is currently in trial with multiple customers right now, according to a recent interview that was done with Mark Thompson, the CEO of Talga. Ultimately, I'm not worried about any of my positions because I feel really comfortable with my story right now. And to be honest, nothing has changed. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. And if you did learn something new, consider gently smashing that like button right there. And if you wanna be part of my fortnightly Q&A, get access to some additional content pieces and my research as well, consider supporting this channel via Patreon. Nevertheless, I am incredibly thankful that you have watched this video all the way to the end and make sure you subscribe to my channel and click onto the bell so when I release future videos, you be the first one to know. As usual, Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.